What's up guys, this is Mike, the Detroit Borg, and Apple has finally updated the iMac. So they haven't touched this since late 2015, and in this video we're gonna take a look at the 21.5 inch 4K model, which like a lot of the other Macs that were updated this year include KB Lake processors, faster RAM, faster SSD, better graphics, Thunderbolt 3 ports, and more, and we're gonna get into that. Since I'm only interested in the 4K model, there's actually two versions of that you can pick up, the 1299 version and the 1499 version, and that's the version I went with and the one I recommend. So if you're gonna spend $1,300 on the computer, I definitely recommend you go up to 1499 to get much better specs. That gets you a 3.4 instead of a 3.0 quad-core i5 processor. We also get a one terabyte fusion drive instead of a one terabyte 5400 RPM hard disk drive, which is incredibly slow, and I'll demonstrate that when we take a look at the benchmarks. And although we get dedicated Radeon Pro graphics on both 4K models standard, the 560 GPU has four gigs of RAM versus the 555 GPU, which only has two gigs of RAM on the 1299 model. So for only $200 more, I think you get a much better computer. So when it comes to unboxing any iMac, the experience here is pretty familiar. We have a tab along the top so we can pull it and then fold the box down. Of course, it's very well packaged, lots of styrofoam to prevent any damage while shipping. Now, the first thing we have toward the top is our accessory box. So let's go ahead and remove that. Now, this can be customized depending on what you prefer. So in my case, I just went with the default configuration, which includes a Magic Keyboard, along with the second generation Magic Mouse. Now, I've already done videos on these, so if you want to take a look at them, I'll leave that linked in the description below. But of course, the Magic Keyboard does have a slight change here for 2017. So if you look at the control option and function keys, you'll see some new icons. Now, the first thing I want to do here is make sure that all of these are on. They do have internal rechargeable batteries, so in the bottom of the box, we'll also find a lightning connector. We also have some paperwork, and the paperwork is pretty basic. We have a quick start guide, regulatory and warranty information. Of course, we get a set of white Apple stickers and a black microfiber cleaning cloth. So the 21.5 inch iMac is pretty lightweight, so I'm able to handle it pretty easily. The 27 inch is quite a bit heavier. Now in one of these foam blocks is a power cable. So once again, the power supply is internal, so no power brick for your iMac. And then when we get to the iMac itself, first thing we have to do here is peel off the envelope surrounding the iMac, and then we can go ahead and pull that off. Of course, we're not done yet. We have lots of plastic surrounding the front of the iMac. So all I have to do is peel it off along the sides and it should just pull off in one piece. In terms of design, once again, very little has changed here. There's a few things we'll point out, but overall, it's still a single piece of aluminum with that very thin edge. So it looks ultra thin from the sides, but it does bow out toward the center to house all of the internal components. And of course, we have that articulating hinge, which allows us to change the angle of the display. Also back here is the exhaust fan for keeping the internals nice and cool. We'll also find the power connector for our flush mounted power cable. And just below that is a Kensington lock. On the left side or the right side, depending on what side you're looking at, uh, we have all of our IO, which has been updated for 2017 with Thunderbolt 3. So those are two Thunderbolt 3 or USB type C connectors in addition to four USB 3.0 ports, an SDXC card slot, a headphone jack, and of course, a gigabit ethernet connectors. So at least we didn't lose anything with Thunderbolt 3 like we did with some of the other Macs. Of course, we have the concaved power button along the left side, which makes it easy to feel for without having to directly see it. Toward the top edge is the very large black Apple logo, which is part of the RF transparency needed for all the radios built in here, like Wi-Fi. One of those new radios is Bluetooth 4.2. So like the other updated Macs, we also get 4.2 in this computer. Of course, once again, we have that very distinctive iMac chin with the Apple logo toward the center. Now, if you look at the bottom edge, uh, this is actually one of my favorite views of the iMac. You have this razor thin edge with all of these perforations for the down facing speakers and the ventilation. Now, of course, the speakers here, sound fantastic. They do sort of fire down and bounce off a table. So it does create this very immersive soundscape, which I really like about the IMAX. Toward the top edge unchanged from the previous generation is our 720p FaceTime HD camera, along with an LED light and an ambient light sensor. Although I really like the design of this computer, at least from the front, it does look a little dated, especially since 2017 is all about eliminating bezels. This has some pretty big ones. It's a little out of proportion on the smaller IMAX. It's not as bad on the 27 inch, but it's hard to ignore the fact that this design pretty much hasn't changed that much since 2007. In terms of this 4K display, it's the same resolution as last year, 4096 by 2304. It also supports the wide color of P3, so it's a very vibrant display. But this time it's 42 
15% brighter, it's up to 500 nits, and also supports 10-bit color dithering, so it's able to produce up to 1 billion colors. They've also improved the anti-reflective coating just like on the newest MacBook, so it's a little more effective. Now the extra brightness added to this display is really only accessible via the adaptive brightness setting, so you can't really directly access it. So unless the room is extra bright, the extra bright display would just make it look washed out. Now originally I was kind of confused because they looked the same side by side at maximum brightness, but I had to thank Connor on Twitter for the tip that pointed me in the direction of the adaptive brightness setting. For the most part, this is just an internal spec upgrade, so externally you won't see a whole lot different, but internally there's actually quite a bit going on here. So they've completely redesigned the internals. So that includes removable RAM sticks, so you can now swap them out. You can also change out the CPU because it's easily removable, but what's not easy is getting into this computer, which is still quite difficult. Difficult. Speaking of RAM, 8 gigs is standard, but for the first time we get a 32 gig RAM upgrade option for the 4K iMac. Now it's still ridiculously expensive at $600, but it is much faster DDR4 memory running at 2400 megahertz, replacing the DDR3 memory from the previous generation, which ran at 1867 megahertz. Now besides the USB Type-C connectors, there's a few other things that are different visually about this iMac. One of them is the relocation of the dual microphones. So they used to be at the top edge of the previous model, but now it's been reduced to one microphone and it's located just behind the bezel right above the Apple logo. So although you can't see the microphone at all, it still works the same. Another difference I only discovered because I had these computers side by side is that the newer model is slightly shorter than the previous model. It's actually quite noticeable if you put them side by side. I'm not sure if this design change was intentional, but there may have been a slight tweak to the hinge because the uh, newer iMac can actually pitch back a bit farther. Of course, the other big visual key that this is the newer model is Thunderbolt. 3, replacing the Thunderbolt 2 ports from the previous model. So now we have USB Type-C connectors instead of those mini display port or Thunderbolt connectors. But the other detail here is that the labeling on the ports has been simplified quite a bit. Once again, the underside of the base of the pedestal hides all of our information like our serial number, regulatory FCC info, and more. And of course, it's outlined with a rubber shoe that prevents you from scratching the table when you move it around. So when it comes to performance, one of the things that really impresses me here is graphics performance. This is definitely the best graphics performance for the dollar you can get from a Mac. So with Cinebench, I'm able to get almost 100 frames per second, about 93 frames per second. So that will make this a pretty solid platform for AR or VR development, along with onboard gaming and video processing. Now, as I mentioned, the stock iMac comes with a really slow 5400 RPM hard disk drive. Now, if you compare that to the SSD in the Fusion drive, you can see there's a huge difference here. Now, the Fusion drive's SSD does not appear to be much faster than the previous model. If you want the fastest drives, go for the full SSDs. Those should at least double the performance you're seeing here. When it comes to Geekbench, pretty solid results here, around 4800 on the single core score and over 14,000 on the multi-core score. Now, if you compare this to the similarly priced MacBook Pro with Touch Bar, you can see there's a pretty big gap here in terms of performance, so you get a lot more bang for your buck with the iMac. So in the end, especially if you're looking at the 1499 model, this is a very significant update with some impressive processing power, a fantastic GPU, one of the best displays you can buy on any computer today. And of course, we retain the speed and capabilities of Thunderbolt 3 without losing all the other ports for legacy hardware. But of course, this is only half the iMac story. I have the 5K iMac coming in as well. That's gonna be my daily production machine. So make sure you stay tuned for that video. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please give it a thumbs up to let me know. And I'll see you again in my next video.